Let's face it, the feeling of a guy you're really into falling for you is incredibly validating and unique, almost defying logic. However, the specific level of commitment he has for you is crucial. It can range from being a mere distraction to a life-altering and transcendent experience. So today, I'm going to unveil the six distinct levels of commitment a man can have for you so you can assess the solidity, fulfillment, and sustainability of your future with him. The most challenging and dangerous part of a guy that you're really into falling for you is that your biochemistry will make sure sometimes that your logic goes out the window and you start seeing things that may not exist. And if you start investing a lot of time with someone who makes you feel really good, but the relationship doesn't have the depth and doesn't have the trajectory that you're looking for, this ends up wasting your time. And sometimes, and I've heard lots of stories, thousands of them, it's years, years of being with someone whose depth of commitment to you was very basic, even though you weren't able to see it. So I want to give you right now, I want to equip you with a pair of magnifying glasses and a strategy that can help you assess which level of commitment is this guy that you're into really displaying and stepping into. Now, at the end of this video, I'm also going to share with you, so stick around, the number one biggest challenge and reason why most people will never get to the deepest level of commitment in the Kangol Zone. The first level of commitment that a guy can have for a woman is what I call infatuation and projection. The guy's into you, he feels really excited to see you, you feel excited to see him, you think he checks, checks your boxes, he thinks you check his boxes, but the truth is right now, it's mostly a chemistry thing and a high level of projection. And here's the problem, exclusivity can happen at any of the levels that I'm sharing with you right now but only some of them are conscious. So if he becomes exclusive with you, it's really the equivalent of playing Russian roulette. You're connecting with someone where you feel highly validated and you feel excitement and intensity, but you have no idea what you're getting into and you're hoping for the best. The second level of commitment that a guy can have for a woman is what I call exploration and surprise. There's still that feeling of newness and magic, but there's a more conscious him really wanting to know you. At the beginning, it's more of a, this is great. The second level is where the guy is actively searching to figure out who you are. He wants to know your hopes and your dreams, and he wants to understand what makes you happy and what makes you sad. And you're getting the feeling in that level of being seen. That's the biggest pull to connect with someone this way. Now, this is the challenge with this. As he's getting to know you, even if he's really hungry to get to know you, he still doesn't know you. So if he commits to you at this level, if he commits to you in the, I don't really know who she is, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing, that's still a big risk on both ends. The third level of commitment that a guy can have for a woman is consistency. That includes a couple of things, friendship and chemistry. Because if you just have a friend, a uh, roommate type, you don't feel that chemistry. That's not what I'm talking about. You want the connection of chemistry and you want the connection of friendship as well. So in the level of friendship, the guy is not just getting to know you, he's come more and more to know you. And he's acting in such a way that he's acting on your best behalf. He's there for you, not just in good times, but in bad times as well. He's incorporating more of his life into yours. He's getting a chance to know more of your friends, maybe the family members. The friendship is really the foundation of a great relationship. And this is taking place. And this happens through his actions. You can gauge that the guy knows you, has shown up consistently, you're confining and being vulnerable, you're both evolving into more vulnerability, but the actions are where you can really gauge this level of friendship because he's showing up not just when it's easy, when it's hard, when it's inconvenient, he really wants to add value to your life and he's showing up this way. The fourth level of commitment from a guy is what I call conscious exclusivity. Here's the thing, as I said, exclusivity can happen at any of the first levels, but it's not conscious enough until you both decide that you are in a relationship because you also want to explore if you can spend the rest of your life together. So you're not just boyfriend, girlfriend, you're a boyfriend, girlfriend with the intent of having a lifelong commitment. That doesn't necessarily mean marriage. That could be one route, 
It could also be a conscious contract between both of you of spending the rest of your lives with each other. But there's an intent that goes beyond, let's just have fun. This feels good. There's a promise of a pursuit of a better, more connected, more lifelong commitment in this process. You haven't made the decision yet, but it's more of a dress rehearsal. You're really taking everything you can right now to make sure you can get to that promised land. Now, before I share my last two levels of commitment, which by the way, are the juiciest that you can experience in life, especially the last one. If you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine to help them experience the level of depth and connection they've not experienced before. And I've put together a quiz. You can take it in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. So if you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single, and a custom report it's going to share with you based on your unique blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Fifth level of commitment that a guy can have for a woman is depth of integration. There is a formalization of the relationship. Again, for many human beings, this is going in front of a court and getting married. For some people, it's the conscious exploration of that, the commitment to each other to spend the rest of your life with each other, even without that piece of paper. Whichever way you play it at, there is that conscious personal commitment and commitment to the world that this is what's going on. The depth of integration is also where you really do the best you can to act in service of that person and you connect with their family and you are really growing into not just getting to know that person, but to make everything you can to have an amazing life for as long as humanly possible. The sixth level of commitment, and this is the most challenging to experience, the most scarce of all of them, but the one I think that either consciously or unconsciously we all crave is spiritual devotion. That's the highest level. There's a spiritual partnership that has taken place and there's multiple videos that could be done on this topic. My humble attempt today is going to be to share three core characteristics of what really makes this type of relationship different from the other ones. The first difference is that this level of relationship is going to have expansive love as the core of the relationship. Expansive love means that you're going to do the best you can consciously, not unconsciously. You're going to work on this to express yourself in the most loving way to your partner, not reactive, not coming from a place of unconsciousness, but really doing the best you can to express love in form, in action, in service, in the way your partner needs it clearly and specifically. That's one part of the story. The second part of the story is that you're going to consciously work on repairing the multiple interactions that will need repair as a result of being two human beings, having different wants, different needs, different upbringings, different trauma, different past. You're going to trigger each other. You're going to hurt each other in the process, even with the most conscious type of connection. So your willingness to not just leave that to chance, but to consciously work on how, when something's broken, get back to the place of connection and synergy, feeling of well-being between each other. That is core difference between the first relationships and this one. This is something that is not left up to chance. You're consciously talking about it. The love that you share is mostly expensive. The way you communicate with the partner is mostly expensive. And also the way you repair interactions is very clear, specific, and disciplined. Second characteristic is that the relationship is going to be a sacred container for the expansion of each other's consciousness. In other words, the relationship is going to allow both of you to act in service to the other person's evolution. You both understand that there's going to be parts of you that are going to need some healing. And instead of unconsciously living it up to the other person, acting consciously, responsibly into the healing of yourself, you're working on yourself. You made a commitment to work on yourself. He's made a commitment to work on himself. And what you're doing is you're connecting from a place of understanding that there's going to be parts of your healing that will only take place in this container. There's going to be parts of you, fears, insecurities that will not show up in other areas of life. Therefore, this will give you a sacred space 
to heal those parts of you that cannot be healed in a mountain meditating on your own. But you take the conscious responsibility of not just throwing it on your partner, but on giving them the gift of you doing as much work as you can and asking humbly for help as you heal yourself to help heal that part in you. So that's the second part of this. The third part is that the relationship is going to have a purpose. There's a you and there's a him and there's a third entity called a relationship. And the third entity has value for both of you. Both of you are working not just for your own needs, but for the needs of the relationship consciously. And the purpose of this relationship beyond what the evolution of both of you, the elevation of both of you in connecting with something bigger than yourself, call it the divine, call it the universe, whatever you want to call it. Beyond that, there's going to be a purpose of waking other people up to more of themselves, showing in practice and in person that there's a deeper form of love that's available to other people, that there's a deeper form of connection and transcendence that is possible in this lifetime. So without pontificating or teaching, your example, your connection is waking people up to more, to dream more, to have a heightened view of what's possible. And this day and age where few relationships are like this, if you have one of them, it's your duty to actually express it in the best possible way so that more people can elevate themselves into this kind of kindness and compassion and service of each other. Now, here's the caveat of the whole thing. The biggest impediment for people to reach levels five or six is going to be the entitled thought that this should just happen on its own. That you are born with a skill and with inherited expressiveness to get to this level of connection. And, and here's the reason why for most people it won't happen because most people won't take the actual duty of doing what it takes to get there. This type of relationship is going to require self-introspection, is going to require humility, it's going to require vulnerability, it's going to require therapy at times, it's going to require coaching at times, it's going to require silent meditation, it's going to require a lot. And if your wish is to experience one of this, you may not get it. If your commitment is to experience this, that's a different story. Because that's when you're willing to put skin in the game and discipline into learning the skills that will create the most fulfillment in life you would ever have and the type of relationship that is unlike any you may have had with somebody else. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is how I can grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe, if you find this is something helpful for somebody else that you love, send them their way. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.